Filmmakers today can bring just about anything to life using state-of-the-art digital effects. Whether it's exploding space stations or giant transforming robots, if you can imagine it, the movie industry can spare a couple hundred million to put it up on the big screen. But all that technology can also be used for decidedly more mundane purposes, like making an actor's body parts look bigger or erasing embarrassing tattoos. In fact, the movie industry's top effects animators are often hard at work adding and subtracting tiny elements that may never be noticed by most filmgoers. Here's a look at some actors whose real-life features had to be digitally altered for the movies. Dakota Johnson Whenever you see a nude scene in a movie, there's a good chance that nobody on set ever really got naked. Often, actors wear flesh-colored underwear, and for most movies this is enough because intimate scenes don't really factor into the plot. Not true for the film adaptation of Fifty Shades of Grey. Those scenes are the plot, which posed a unique problem for the effects department. Specifically because it showed more skin than most other films do, a decision needed to be made about whether or not Dakota Johnson's character, Anastasia Steele, had a personal grooming routine. Apparently, she didn't, because a digital effects artist had to go in during post-production and use CGI to give Johnson, um, one of these. Cinematographer Seamus McGarvey would later refer to this as one of the most surreal moments of his entire career, closely followed by overseeing the hiring process of a suitable butt double for Johnson. Nicolas Cage It's safe to say that Nicolas Cage loves comic books. His son Cal L is named after Superman. He changed his own last name early in his career from Coppola to Cage as a nod to Marvel character Luke Cage, and he even has a large tattoo of the Ghost Rider on his arm. This latter tribute proved to be a problem when Cage was set to star in the 2007 Ghost Rider film because, well, it would have been kind of weird for Johnny Blaze to have a tattoo of his own superhero alter ego on his bicep. So the decision was made to use the magic of special effects to hide the offending tattoo whenever Cage needed to take off his shirt. A persistent rumor surrounding the movie suggests that Cage's abs were also created using the magic of CGI. However, his Ghost Rider co-star Ava Mendez has confirmed they were in fact 100% real. <laughs> Christian Naren There is a scene in the first season of Game of Thrones when the character Hodor, played by actor Christian Naren, gets naked, revealing the giant character's suitably plus-sized anatomy. To achieve the illusion, Naren was asked to wear a realistic-looking 16-inch prosthetic that was attached to his groin using glue. So, for weeks later, I would be finding pieces of prosthetic penis. Um, attached to my own. The effects department then blended the whole thing to his body using digital effects, airbrushing out a special thong Naren was wearing beneath the whole getup. According to the actor, this thong shielded his actual package from view so well that one of his co-stars asked if it was real. There's only one response to that question. Hold on. Paul Rubens if you happen to catch Pee-wee's Big Holiday on Netflix, you may have noticed that actor Paul Rubens looked surprisingly spry and youthful for a 60-something-year-old man. To give the impression that Rubens hadn't aged since his last TV appearance as the character, CGI was used in tandem with makeup, lighting, and sticky tape to de-age the actor. And that last part isn't a joke. Tape was used to pull back Rubens' face for some scenes to make his skin look smoother. Sometimes the simplest solutions are the best ones. To his credit, Rubens was surprisingly open about the use of CGI to remove his wrinkles, admitting that Pee Wee simply wouldn't work with age mixed into it. <laughs> Breakfast bar! Scone! French toast! American toast! <laughs> the cast of Glee The hit musical dramedy Glee continued the long-standing Hollywood tradition of hiring older actors to play teenagers. Although none of the actors playing high schoolers on the show were the age they were supposed to be, they still apparently suffered from a fairly common affliction that plagues all young people — acne. This didn't zit well with the producers, who paid an unnamed visual effects company to do what was dubbed a pimple pass on most episodes to ensure every actor's skin was blemish-free. Because if there's anything that's going to make a show relatable to young people, it's flawless-looking actors with perfect skin complaining about being unattractive. Jessica Alba Jessica Alba resolved long ago to not take off her clothes for a movie. She told Scarlet Magazine in 2010, 
I can act sexy and wear sexy clothes, but I can't go naked. My grandmother would freak out and throw a towel over me if she saw me wearing just a bra and panties. I can handle being sexy with clothes on, but not with them off. Anyone who watched 2010's Machete after reading the article in Scarlet was likely surprised when Alba appeared to be nude during a shower scene. But the key word there is appeared. In reality, Alba was clothed, and her garments were digitally replaced in post-production with computer-generated skin. Claire Danes When a regular for a hit show gets pregnant, sometimes creators use the tools the universe has given them and write the pregnancy into the story. But when Claire Danes announced she was pregnant with her first child in 2012, she assured fans her Homeland character Carrie Matheson would remain fervently non-pregnant for the show's second season. Dane's onset work for season two of Homeland continued as late as six weeks before she gave birth. Her baby bump was digitally erased in post-production, and body doubles were also used to help with the subterfuge. It wouldn't be the last time Homeland used these strategies to keep a pregnancy out of the story. The following year, they used similar techniques on Morena Baccarin. Even though it didn't show up on screen, Dane's pregnancy didn't make things any easier for her. She described one particularly difficult scene that had her chained in a basement. It was 4 a.m. I was seven and a half months pregnant, oh and I was like, this sucks. She also said the pregnancy made love scenes difficult, using the example of the shooting of one love scene when her baby was particularly active. It was like he was protesting on my husband's behalf. Chris Evans Among all the otherworldly characters in Marvel movies, the young, scrawny Steve Rogers in 2011's Captain America The First Avenger remains one of Marvel's most impressive CGI effects. No single technique was used to create the smaller and skinnier pre-experiment Steve Rogers. Marvel hired Lola Visual Effects to do the digital bodywork on Chris Evans for Captain America. Lola's supervisor Edson Williams told Variety that the so-called Benjamin Button method, or digitally attaching Evans' face to a body double, was only used for 15% of the shots. For the rest, Lola digitally shrunk Evans' face and body. The process involved shooting everything at least three times, once with Evans, once with Evans' smaller body double, and one clean shot without either of them. With each shot, the team determined whether to go the easier Benjamin Button route or what Lola came to call Steve Slimming. Williams said the most challenging part of the process was caused by Evans' massive arms. When shot in profile, they blocked an entire third of his body. So the fabric of Evans' shirts would need to be digitally erased and replaced with something else to give the illusion of skinny and comparatively weak arms. That's probably the only time in the history of superhero movies that bulking up turned out to be a bad thing. Guy Henry and Ingvild Dela For better or worse, prequels are now a staple of film franchises, and CGI is part of what makes them possible. The filmmakers of Rogue One faced particularly tough challenges. For the story they wanted, they needed to recreate the characters of Grand Moff Tarkin and Princess Leia. Peter Cushing, who played Tarkin in 1977's Star Wars, passed away in 1994. Carrie Fisher, who portrayed Princess Leia, was still alive during the making of Rogue One, but she looked and sounded nothing like she had, since about four decades had passed. So Tarkin and Leia were digitally recreated. For principal photography, Tarkin was played by British actor Guy Henry, who wore a motion capture headpiece during filming. Animators worked meticulously to recreate the actor's mannerisms. Not quite so much work was needed for the digital rebirth of Princess Leia. When seen from behind, she's fully Norwegian actress Ingvild Dela. From the front, what you see is almost entirely a digital creation, though Leia's outstretched hand is Dela's. Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen X-Men The Last Stand is not a well-loved movie among comic book fans, but at least one aspect of the film was pretty groundbreaking. The film opens with Professor X and Magneto making an early attempt to recruit Jean Grey into Xavier's school for mutants. The flashback sequence takes place around 20 years before the events of the rest of the film, and the filmmaker is one of the actor's appearances to reflect those younger days. Rather than using prosthetics or special motion capture suits, the sequence was shot as if no changes were going to be made to it at all. The VFX team then used a process called digital skin grafting to rejuvenate Stewart and McKellen, utilizing old photographs for reference as well as consulting with a plastic surgeon to learn the specifics of how skin changes as people age. Kurt Russell Like the film that preceded it, Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 opens on Earth several decades in the past. We see Meredith Quill being romanced by a Kurt Russell who looks like he could have just finished filming Big Trouble in Little China. 
but there seems to be a little disagreement regarding how this on-screen rejuvenation was achieved. When Russell talked about the transformation, he said it was about 90% makeup and added that the filmmakers didn't do much digital manipulation. Russell says he's been working with the same makeup artist, Dennis Ledger, since 1989, and Ledger pulled off most of the work. They just did a little brush up, clean up on a couple of things, but it's pretty much what Dennis Ledger did. Writer slash director James Gunn's recollection is significantly different. In the comments section of a video Gunn posted on Facebook, the director responded to a fan question about the flashback sequence. He wrote, A company named Lola did the effects and they did an incredible job. First we film every scene with Kurt. A young actor, Aaron Schwartz, watches everything Kurt Russell does. He then goes in and mimics Kurt's actions. We then take Kurt's acting in general face and body and place Aaron's skin onto him. It is a long, painstaking process that took many, many months to accomplish. Robert Downey Jr. For all the CGI used in Captain America Civil War, the film's most stunning visual effect came in a comparatively low-key moment. An early scene in Civil War opens to what appears to be a flashback. A young Tony Stark is giving exactly the snark we expect from him as his parents, Howard and Maria, are about to leave for a fateful trip. Who's the homeless person on the couch? <sighs> This is why I love coming over Christmas, right before you leave town." We eventually learn we're seeing Stark's memories as they're translated through a device Stark has developed. As they did when digitally rejuvenating characters in earlier films, Marvel Studios called on Lola visual effects to take 20 to 25 years off Downey. The scene presented one of the toughest challenges Lola has had to tackle while working with Marvel because the entire sequence was filmed in a single shot. Trent Klaus, Lola's visual effects supervisor, told The Hollywood Reporter, "...the shot was nearly 4,000 frames long, with Tony Stark turning from one side to the other multiple times, physically interacting with other actors, and the set itself, and moving closer to the camera for a very long, uninterrupted close-up." Klaus went on to say that analyzing footage from Downey's late 80s film work was essential in achieving the effect and singled out 1987's Less Than Zero as a focal point. But it's so real, it freaked me out. It freaked everybody. You think it freaked me the heck out? <laughs> I mean, I was, I was, was like, my God, he was beautiful. <laughs> what happened? 